Hello, and welcome to Everything is Spooky in the Dark, the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. I'm your host, Crystal, and today we'll be talking about the crushing death of Giles Corey. Have you heard of Giles Corey? Unless you have a particular interest in the Salem Witch Trials, you may have never even heard his name. And you may not be aware of the brutal way he died. Giles Corey was pressed to death. Giles was a farmer who moved to Salem from England in 1658. He led a seemingly peaceful life as a family man and farmer. But his life took a dark turn in 1675, when he beat a man to death. Although Giles was a prosperous and important farmer in Salem Village, he had been known to have a bad temper and to have violent outbursts. So when Giles' farmhand, Jacob Goodale, was beaten so bad he died from his injuries, the townsfolk were right to suspect Giles. Fellow farmer, John Proctor, apparently overheard Giles confessing to killing Jacob and immediately went to the authorities. It is said that the farmhand, Jacob, was stealing apples and this sent Giles into a fit of rage and he beat Jacob with a stick. However, Giles managed to get away with the murder by claiming that Jacob had fallen and only had to pay a fine to the local authorities. With all this, his reputation was now tarnished and he was seen as a little shady until he married a woman named Martha. Martha was his third wife, but we won't get into the details of his past wives in this podcast. Giles finally settled down and at the age of 80, he and his wife finally became members of the church. The year was now 1692, and this is the year that Salem became the breeding ground for mass hysteria. The girls in town started acting strangely, barking, pulling their hair out and having convulsions. What was behind all this chaos? Witchcraft. Just like an episode of Oprah where everyone gets a car, you get a car, and you get a car, everyone was getting a car. Except in Salem, it was much less exciting because instead of a car, everyone was getting accused of witchcraft. The witch trial started, and Giles and his wife Martha were present in the courtroom when the first of the accused were to stand trial. While Martha was in the courtroom watching the witch trials go down, she made herself known as she called the claims given by the afflicted girls preposterous, and said that she was surprised they were being taken seriously. I mean, all they had was spectral evidence. How could that stand in court? Well, unfortunately for Martha, This led to the girls pointing their fingers at her. Within a couple of days, the girls said that they were being attacked by Martha Corey. Clearly, this must mean she's a witch. This was enough proof, and Martha gets thrown in jail to await her trial. This is actually where things get a little bit confusing with Giles. Because after Martha, his wife, was accused, he actually testified against her. Yeah. Apparently, Giles said that while Martha was around, his cat and his ox were suddenly ill, and Martha was behind the whole thing. What a great husband. I don't know what got into Giles. Maybe the witch hysteria that was getting to everyone got to him? Who knows? All I do know is that Giles realized he had made a mistake and tried to recant his accusations against Martha. However, at this point, it's too late, and Martha was sentenced to execution by hanging. This made Giles Corey angry, and he says to the girls who accused his wife, Why don't we hang you girls and be done with the whole thing? Well, can you guess what happens next? Giles Corey is accused of being a witch. Three girls, Ann Putnam, Abigail Williams and Maisie Lewis point the finger at Giles, and the courts claim that all the inflicted were seized now with fits and troubled with pinches. So what did Giles Corey do? He refused to enter a plea because he knew the fate of those who were accused of witchcraft. 
No matter if those accused would plead guilty or not guilty, their fate was the same. Death. So, due to the laws that one must plead guilty or not guilty before facing trial, Giles decided to just say nothing. He was standing mute and was thrown in jail. However, under the same law, people were legally allowed to be tortured to coerce a confession. The court says, if Giles Corey refuses trial, he will be tortured until he verbally submits. On September 17th, 1692, Giles Corey was dragged to the street where he was stripped naked and placed onto a board that was placed in a shallow pit. He then had another board with some heavy stones placed on top of him. Every hour on the hour, another rock would be added to the pile. Increasing the weight and the torture, they would ask Giles Corey, how do you plead? Of course, Giles, who knew he was going to die, and probably wanted it to be over with as quickly as possible, just kept saying, MORE WEIGHT! Of course, the court didn't want to kill him. They just wanted to get his confession so they could take his land. Giles knew that if he had confessed, his family would lose everything. Because once he went to trial for being a witch in Salem, the court would take your house, your land, and everything you owned. So if Giles never confesses, his family would still own everything. Defiance until the end. The sheriff at the time of the witch trials was named George Corwin. He had been known to be quite a sadistic and cruel man. He thrived on power and he loved to torture people. After two long days of torture, almost three days, and with 750 pounds of rocks sitting on top of Giles Corey, Sheriff Corrin had enough. He climbs on top of the rocks that were pressing Giles Corey to death and uses his full body weight and jumps up and down, demanding a plea. At this point though, Giles could barely speak because his tongue was swollen and it was sticking out of his mouth. He had been slowly pressed and had gone without food or water for a few days. He was nearing death. So in a last attempt at getting a confession, the sheriff takes Giles' cane and uses it to shove Giles' tongue back into his mouth. Giles opens his mouth to say one last thing. Legend says that this is when Giles Corey uses his last dying breath and curses the sheriff and the town of Salem with the words, Damn you, I curse you, Salem. And so, on September 19th, under the torture of stone weights, he dies. His wife Martha is hanged a few days later, and his family gets to keep the land. But what about his curse? Well, depending on how you feel about the brutal sheriff, you might be pleased to find out that he died of heart problems just four years later, at the young age of 30. And so did every other sheriff for the next 300 years. The curse held until 1991, when Salem got rid of the position of sheriff and opted for a municipal police department. What about the rest of Salem? The town that Giles Corey cursed with his last breath. Well, rumor has it that every time the town suffers from a catastrophe, an apparition of Giles Corey is seen just before it begins. In fact, many townspeople claim they saw Giles Corey right before the Great Salem Fire in 1914 that started near Gallows Hill, where his wife Martha was hanged. Whether or not you believe Giles Corey cursed Salem and the sheriffs, what happened to him and all of the other innocent people who lost their lives in Salem during the witch trials was tragic. It's hard to comprehend that such brutal torture and killings based on nothing but spectral evidence actually happened in real life. Now, before I let you go, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that Sheriff Corrin was trying to hurt Giles Corey to finally get his confession? Or do you think that after two long days of torture, 
He was just trying to give the final dying blow to end the torture and finally end Giles Corey's life. I guess we'll never really know. Thank you for listening to Everything is Spooky in the Dark. For more information about Giles Corey and the history of the Salem Witch Trials, be sure to visit wanderingcrystal.com or check out the blog post linked in the podcast description below. Thanks.